Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk about the asset Ram gem. I saw this posted by dog weather on Reddit, uh, yesterday, day before yesterday. I don't know. I started over the weekend and then for this video, I was like, all right, this is what we're going to talk about. Uh, this is a performance improvement gem. It's going to be doing some of your caching for you. They do uh, have it running on their, uh, their homepage and you can see this loads up pretty quickly. They also use it on a large uh, multi-tenant production application. So if those are your concerns, that's also apparently handled. Uh, there's a little bit of configuration you need for that with like, uh, you know, indicating which CDN to serve like your assets from, but you can still cache it uh, down here, wherever they have that section right here with the cache key for a site. But the, the overall idea here is your Rails application is going to be doing a lot of allocations whenever you first hit the home page. And if you repeatedly hit it, you might be doing those, you know, ad nauseum until, until your application just has a less than ideal user experience. So what Asset Ram is going to do for you is it's going to reduce the number of uh, allocations you have. You can see here with their table, uh, the reductions went from like 4,300 to 2,800, which is like a 35% increase or decrease. Uh, in my case, I did uh, five unsplash images on a little application here. We're just going to build this real quick. And these five images, I think the allocations were reduced by like 55% or something. So it was like 4,800 to, to like 20 something. But yeah, I, uh, numbers, you know, they mean stuff, but it, it really just, it's going to be hard to, I guess, appreciate the difference until you have a production application. But if you're in that position where you're looking to uh, do some fine tuning, then the asset RAM gem is going to be probably the one you want to go with. Now for this, uh, I go over to Unsplash and I just search for random words when I need to test stuff like this. So here I just typed in the word planet uh, and then I just went ahead and I downloaded like five of these images. So I just, uh, I guess I come over here, I click the little plus button. So I guess I come over here, I just click the little download button uh, and then I made a folder with my images here. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and I'll say six. We'll just add one more. Sure, why not? Uh, and now I have six little placeholder images. Once you've done that, uh, you can then go ahead and just go over here. We'll just make a new app. We'll say Rails new video. We'll go ahead, we'll CD into the video project and we'll go ahead and we'll run a code dot. Again, pretty standard stuff, uh, but the test data, I don't like including it in the GitHub repo because you don't really need my images, but if you ever want to find them, I like showing how to get them uh, relatively quickly. Now, these are all totally free to use, even for commercial purposes, but they do appreciate it if you credit the authors of the images. So if you're using it for uh, commercial purposes, you know, just make sure you credit people. Uh, you don't have to, of course, but it's always nice when you do. Because uh, imagine if you were that artist or if you were the guy that everyone was stealing the code from, right? You'd probably want some some semblance of credit. But okay, for the asset RAM gem, we can come over here. We can uh, add this to our gem file. Come in here, paste it at the bottom, just like that. Go ahead and run a bundle command to install this. And at this point, you're pretty much done. So all we have to do now is, I guess, generate a controller. We'll say Rails G controller pages home. And then we can come over to our, oops, our routes. I have a bandaid on my finger, so my typing might be a little weird today. Uh, we can change the pages uh, slash to a hash, and then we can say pages controller home action, just like that. Go ahead and run a Rails S here, and come over here and refresh by going to localhost port 3000. We should be good to go. I'll zoom in a bit so you can actually see this. All right, so the first thing to cover is, uh, I guess we can just set up some of the basics in our uh, little you know home page here. What we'll do is we'll come over, we'll grab the, I don't remember if I use this, but we have like this bootstrap link here. I'll just grab the CDN for the bootstrap. Uh, and then we can say in our app, our views, our layouts and our application.html.erb, we'll paste this in. What we can do is we can come in here and we can grab this URL here and we can just create another uh, style sheet tag here. I'm gonna go ahead and tab this over. We'll paste in this URL. So we just have a style sheet link tag with this URL and then we'll get rid of this bootstrap CDN one. We can come down here and we can do something similar for a uh, JavaScript tag from URL. And hopefully we can get this with a JavaScript include tag. And then we can come back over to the bootstrap docs and we can grab the super bundle. We'll go ahead, we'll paste this in real quick. Uh, oops, we actually have to paste in the full tag and then grab the URL again. I don't know why this is such a pain to do, but there we go. 
Uh, so if we save that, come over here and refresh, we hopefully don't run into any errors, but we can hopefully at least see that if we were to do something like a dot container and wrap it around everything, this should cause it to tab over, which it does. So we have that bootstrap working. All right, so that's, that's step zero, I guess. The reason why we did this is because we can probably apply the same things. We just need to uh, set it up right. So for the actual dog weather stuff, we need to import our images. So in my case, I have them all in a uh, download assets folder here. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab this, come over to assets and images, and I'll just drag this over into my images, just like that. There you go, we got all six of them, that's good. So now to actually use these, we can come over to our pages in our homepage, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy one of these lines uh, for our image tag real quick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say this needs to be a image tag. We're gonna give it the name of the image because it's just inside of our uh, assets images, we can just use the direct name here, which is one.jpg. We can then give it a class, which is just gonna be home image and a loading of lazy. The lazy loading we've covered on the channel before. The reason why we're giving it a class of home.image is because we want to come into our assets style sheet, right? And in here, we just want to give the home image a width of 300 pixels and a height of auto. And then we do some stuff for the footer that's totally not necessary, uh, but it just causes it to be positioned in the center. We'll worry about the footer in a second here. So this gives us one image. If we come over here and we refresh, we can already see we've got 28,000 allocations. But again, this is gonna do some semblance of caching for us. If we refresh, we'll be down to like 3,200 on that refresh, right? So that's not something to worry about. It won't be 70,000 every time. It won't be that huge initial hit. But now what I wanna do is I want to grab this and I wanna do the other uh, six of these. So let me go ahead and paste this. And then we'll just say this is gonna be two, this is gonna be three, this is gonna be four, this is really boring, five, I hope you're not clicking away, six. There we go, we got all six of them, they're showing up here. We got two per, per column or whatever, or two per row. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we want to add in the asset RAM stuff. What we're going to do is we're just going to hold alt right here. We're going to alt drag all the way down or just alt click. You can go ahead and just grab your braces, do something like that. Uh, oops, let's do this. And then we can come over here and we can say asset ram colon colon helper dot cache space. And that gives you your opening braces. Now we can come over here and do the same thing again. We can just go ahead and grab all these, close it and everything should be good. So now these should be cached, which means our initial hit here is gonna be a little bit bigger. But you can see here, the initial hit causes it to cache all of these. And now if we were to refresh, we won't have this initial hit every time. So we can come over here and we can refresh uh, and we won't have that like huge cache hit. We're running around like 2,500 allocations right now. Uh, but if we were to uh, disable this, which we can do real quick, we can come over to our application.erb and in here, what we can do is we can just say, this needs to do something like this. We set the environment variable for asset underscore RAM underscore disabled, just equal to true, true or whatever you want. Save this, stop your server and start it. And what you'll notice when we refresh here is we are not caching, oops, we are not caching those images again. So anytime you run it with that disabled, you'll have the same performance you did previously. So if we come down here and refresh, we'll see we're averaging about 5,300 allocations. Keep refreshing, this will keep happening, right? If we come over here and we comment this out, stop our server and refresh, we can now come over here and refresh. We'll see 42,000, that's the initial hit. You can ignore that one. And now we're at 2,700 or 2,750, 2,760-ish, right? So what we've done is we've gone from like that 50, whatever, 54, 5,300 to 2,750. So we can open up a calculator. We can say 27, oops, let me move it over here. We can say 2,750 divided by 5,400 gives you about a 50%. So I lied to you with the 54%. Here it's like 50 point whatever. So that's one thing to note. This little environment variable here can be very helpful uh, if you want to do some testing. Now, just like they mentioned in the readme, you can also apply this to partials. We can come over to our layouts, our application.html.erb, and in here we can say, all right, at the bottom of our page, we want not two of these JavaScript include tags. We want a render for a uh, shared slash footer. So we'll go ahead and we'll create that. We'll say this needs to have a shared folder. And then in the shared folder, we'll say, all right, this needs a new file underscore footer dot, uh, html.erb. And then in here, we can just say test, uh, testing, um, I don't know, copyright notices, 
uh, social media links. Go ahead and save this. Oops, go ahead and save this. And now if we come over here and we refresh, uh, this will work just like you would expect it to. So we get that initial hit, come over here, refresh uh, our footer. Of course, we need to do the equal sign here for the render. Uh, now, if we refresh, we should hopefully see this footer right here. Uh, what we can do to make it actually work though, is we have to give it a class. So we'll just come up here, we'll say dot footer. And this should match the class we created in our application dot CSS file. And now you can see the footers right here. So we can do the same thing we did before. We can come over to our asset RAM thing here, copy this, come back to our application that HTML that you're B. We can wrap this around a asset RAM helper dot cache. Go ahead and refresh this. And now this should be cached just like you would expect it to. So you're down to 2,700 allocations again. Now, similarly, we can do that over here for our assets, I would imagine. We can come up to the style sheet link tag. We can say, we know this is going to be static and unchanging. So we just come over here and we wrap these in these little braces and refresh the page. We get an initial hit for 2,800 because it once again has to cache these things. And now if we come over here and we refresh, we went from 2,750 to 2,640. 40 ish, right? So that's another thing that you can do. Now I don't have an example here where I can show you multi tenancy, but down here in the readme, they do have a section that covers it, which was using the cache keys. And of course these sites are going to be relative to wherever you want to host it from. So this is where you're pointing to which key you need for whichever site I'm assuming. Uh, so this is, I guess how they handle it. So you have this call to the cache, which allows the extra key info to be passed. They put that in the HTML head view. Uh, they already have a site variable for choosing the CSS file for the domain. So they reuse that cache key info. Again, the readme here is very extensive. It even gives a justification for the origins of this tool. She shows you how it works uh, and a bunch of other stuff. It's not a long read. I'd recommend just reading through it, but I really wanted to bring attention to this because you know, 35% plus improvement anywhere in your app is always going to be cool. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this was interesting and helpful. Make sure to go check out their GitHub repo. Uh, and hopefully I will see you in the next video.